Welcome to Paint Cool Stuff. This is Hardy from Digital Painting Studio, and today we're going to paint a really cool zombie project. So let's just dive right in. This is something that I developed as part of this really big design course that I'm working on. So it's mostly about storytelling and some design things, but I, I really liked the rendering, so I thought it would be worth posting here just as kind of a cool rendering project. But diving right in with this sketch, with a zombie, there is just so much cool storytelling opportunities to go on, but that all starts with the pose. So that's crucial to get right. So I'm starting with some really rough gestural stuff just to get that awesome kind of hunched over, aggressive, but sort of lazy at the same time character that we want out of a zombie sketch. And I'm also starting to make some, some story decisions about what kind of zombie this is, kind of what his backstory is, where did he come from, who was he before he died, all of that really fun storytelling stuff that makes zombies so interesting. I'm kind of settling in on the idea of kind of a Viking warrior zombie, so giving him some, some Viking type iconography and weaponry, I think that'll all fit really well. Okay, the sketch is getting pretty far along. I've got some cool details. I've got his pose pretty well nailed down, kind of a, a twisting posture, like he's he was sort of shambling along, but then he noticed us, the viewer, and kind of turned to aggressively come towards us. All kinds of cool little story elements we can fit in just with our pose, and that's, that's a huge part of, of making a cool zombie is getting all that cool backstory right.
switching gears from design mode to painting mode. So we've got our design finished. It's time to start adding some values to make this guy look realistic and cool. Zombies are super fun to paint. And the thing I think I like most about it is that there is absolutely no restraint involved. When you're painting figures, a lot of the times when it's just a normal living person, you have to be kind of restrained, very artful in how you apply certain effects. But with a zombie, and actually with like a really old rough type character, you can just over describe everything and it just makes it look cooler. So the more marks, the more value edge cuts, little divots and in little skin imperfections, the more of that you add, just the cooler this zombie is gonna look. He's gonna look all gross and like he's decaying and that all works for us. So you can kind of just go absolutely max out all of these cool painting effects and it just looks cooler. There's, there's practically no way to overdo it. As we go through this value painting, we're kind of trying to show a lot of underlying anatomy. So a lot of almost exposed muscles and his rib cage, kind of that sunken in belly, all of these great anatomical details that we get to show just to show that he's kind of decaying and decomposing and, and all of this gross stuff starts to become visible. But it's also kind of a really fun figure drawing challenge just to to show all of that anatomy that is usually hidden under layers of, of fat and, and skin. Alright, it's time to convert our flat value rendering into skin tone. So I'm doing kind of an underpainting just to get a little bit of hue variation in there, kind of have some areas a little more pink and leave some areas with that dark cyan showing through. And I'm just going to start to fine tune that. This is overall a lot warmer in tone than I want it to be eventually. He actually still looks kind of alive with these nice warm skin tones. So I'll end up cooling that off and graying it out a lot to make him look more zombified. But for now, we're just kind of refining things, evening out a lot of that modeled texture that I did in our value rendering, kind of smoothing things out and establishing some shadows, cool little cast shadows so we can see how sunken in and, and hidden away some parts of his, his anatomy are.
erasing away some, some hard edges where his skin and clothing kind of meet just to make a more clean edge where we can define these little clothing and armor details later, but it's, it's nice to have that very clean border to establish where the skin ends and where the, the leather stuff begins. Okay, let's paint some teeth and eyes now. These are going to be a huge focal point for a zombie, for any kind of creature that can eat you. It's something that the viewer's eyes will really focus on, so we want to get this right. First, I, I wanted to have his jaw kind of slacked open a little bit, like he's making one of those little creepy zombie breathy sounds when he first notices us. I also want his teeth to be kind of nasty, a lot of teeth uh, roots showing, like his gums have kind of rotted away, his lips are gone, all that great stuff. It's practically like he's a skull looking at us. Another thing, uh, sort of the same kind of idea, but with the eyes, I made them almost perfectly round, like he is just staring at us wide-eyed. Maybe his eyelids are gone, or zombies don't really care enough to blink or squint anymore. All they do is just see what they are after, and they just go after it. It's kind of that simplified zombie brain that we're trying to communicate. So he's just staring right at us, chomping his nasty teeth, and that's, that's just the perfect kind of feeling I want to give to the viewer, is all that sort of spooky zombie stuff that's, that's communicated kind of subconsciously. Adding in some photo textures now, there's actually kind of a zombie skin texture that I've developed over the years and I've just pasted that in and I've got it on a soft light blending mode and it just adds lots of cool hue variation and just makes parts of his skin look kind of dingy and rotten away. It just really gives us that great zombie uh, kind of skin characteristics that we're looking for. So I actually have a purpose-made sheet of texture just for this. So this this really gross zombie skin. And uh, this, this sheet is available for download at digitalpaintingstudio.com if anybody would find that useful. Just doing a little bit of rendering on these, these leather elements in his clothing. Just a few areas of braids and kind of Viking-like uh, design elements just to make this seem a little more interesting and make it fit our backstory. But pretty subtle rendering here. I, I like his skin to be kind of the, the biggest focal point of the image. So I'm leaving this pretty dark and pretty gray. It's all fairly muted.
getting close to a finished product here. So I'm adding in a little bit of metal rendering just to give this clothing a few areas of pop and interest. And we'll also do some metal rendering on the, the head of this ax that he's kind of dragging along to. As a final polish, I'm adding a really intense kind of secondary light source, sort of lighting up the dark side of his face, almost from beneath. Gives it a nice cinematic finish, kind of makes it look like one of those horror movie posters where the creature's face is kind of lit from beneath, so I thought that would be a really good final polish trick. With that, I think we just about have a finished painting. I really like how this turned out. Tons of great story, lots of fun, and, and really cool rendering opportunities with a character like this. So if you tried something like this, I hope you had some success. Be sure to join us next time on Paint Cool Stuff. And in the meantime, good luck with your artwork.